Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be going over a topic that's going to be really useful for anyone who wants to make a really complicated shape for their first project. Today we're going to talk about creating faces, and we should already know what faces are because we selected them in the last video. We're going to create some faces, we're going to create some lines, and we're going to learn how to trace. Tracing is really valuable if we want to take a two-dimensional image and give it a 3D look and feel. I'm going to be doing that today with the Blender logo. So if I open up an image here that I got from the internet, I'm going to be taking this Blender logo, and I'm going to be turning this into a 3D logo, and I'm going to do that by tracing it. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is get the image into our Blender scene. We can do that by adding it as a background image. Now, adding background images is a little tricky because there's a couple of things that we need. We need the top view, and we need it to be orthographic. So if we take a look at our shortcuts, wow, can't spell. If we take a look at our shortcuts, we can get to the top view with number pad 7. We can get to the uh, orthographic perspective with number pad 5. So I'm going to go number pad 7. Number pad five. Good. Now I don't need this cube, at least not for today's activity. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to press X to delete and get rid of my cube. One thing that I hope you guys are doing is keeping a list of useful shortcuts. It's really handy for you guys to have some of the common shortcuts that we use in this class written down. All right, so what did I just do? I just opened a window over here, um, and I did that by pressing the plus that's right here. So we always pretty much have our tools window open. There's a window over here called the transform panel, and the transform panel is usually hidden, but it's hidden underneath this tiny plus sign. So If I click this plus sign, I open what's called the transform window, and the transform window is where I can set a background image. If I go to, where are my background images? All the way down here. I don't need this stuff open. Any of this stuff open. Display, shading, none of that stuff. I'm looking for a menu option called background images. So I'm going to open that guy. I'm going to click Add Image. Now remember, I already have to have the image downloaded from the internet, so I already have done this. I'm going to click Open, and I'm going to go find my images. We are looking for Blender logo. All right, so I open my Blender logo, and I can see it here on my background. So now I've got something to start tracing with. The problem here is if I change my camera angle at all, I lose the background image. Remember, we need top view and we need it to be orthographic. That's the only way you can see a background image. And we add the image through the transform panel. All right, so I'm going to get back to top view by pressing 7. There's my beautiful image. So now I need to be able to start tracing. And to do that, I need to add some vertices. And, and to add some vertices, I'm going to start with a plane and delete part of it. Stay with me here. It's going to be a little weird, but it'll end up making sense once I get it set up. So in my Create tab, I've got a two-dimensional plane that I can add. And there it is. What I want to do is take one two, three vertices, and line them up right along this edge. Because what I'm going to do is extrude vertices to the point where I've started to create a trace all the way around. That. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go into edit mode because I only need three of these vertices. I'm going to delete the fourth one. We check my notes. Edit mode is tab. So I'm going to use tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to right click just this vert vertex so that I'm only going to delete that one. I'm going to press X to delete and then select 
vertices. That is going to get rid of that corner and leave me with just these three lines. So now I can drag these guys either by holding my clicking down or by using G to transform. I can drag these guys over to where I want my tracing to start. So I'm going to press G and move this guy here. I'm going to zoom so I can see a little better. I'm going to select this guy and press G to move him, oh, let's say right here. And then I'm going to move this guy right. Now, as with anything, the more careful you are, the better your shape is going to come out. So if you remember, when we want to create new edges or faces, or if we want to add to our shape, we use the extrude tool. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to extrude one vertex at a time. And if I press E and I move another one here, I'm going to end up making my way around the Blender logo. So all I'm doing right now is pressing E, pulling the uh, vertex to wherever I want it to be next, and then I'm setting it down with click. Now normally, if I was being really careful and I really wanted to make this shape look good, I would make really small extrusions. But because I don't want this video to last an hour, I'm only going to do uh, the extrusions that I think are going to give you the general idea. So this shape's going to be really blocky and not fantastic you'll get the idea of what's going on. The only tool I'm using right now is the extrude tool. I'm just pressing E, click, E, click. Now, we've reached a little bit of a problem. I want to attach this shape together. To do that, I'm going to need to create an edge between these two guys. And I'm going to do that by filling in the line. So we're going to add another shortcut here. Background image, we've done that. For tracing, we extruded. In addition to extruding, we are now going to fill. And we do that, surprise, surprise, with the F key. However, to fill something, we have to have both of these guys selected. So we're going to add one more shortcut, the Circle Select tool. Circle Select is great because it lets us pick multiple things at once. And we use Circle Select by pressing C. So if I go back in here and I press C, I'm going to get a circle. All I have to do is hover it over these two guys, click, and it grabs both of them. If I wanted to grab everything, I could just click and hold and drag this all over everything, like that. But right now, I only want to select these two. So I am going to get rid of my selection, there we go, and select the only these two vertices. All right, so just keep those guys selected. With those two selected, I'm going to press Enter to be done. I have to, I have to finish my selection. The so circle select is C and then enter when finished. Now I'm just going to use F to fill these guys. And it's kind of hard to see, but if we take a look here, we can see that it's drawn a line between those two vertices. So now I've got one complete shape. All right, in a previous video, we learned how to select all of the vertices in the shape. All starts with an A, we're gonna press A. Select everything. I had to press it twice, because A clears the selection the first time, and then selects everything the second time. For this exercise, simple logos work best. Because the more complicated logos are gonna require tighter corners and harder tracing. The nice thing about a simple logo as well is it's easier to fill. So we want to now get this entire guy filled. We could try to press the F key again, right? We have the option to fill with F, 
So let's see how that does. Let's try filling with F. All right, it worked because Blender is a simple shape. I'm going to undo that for a second. Blender is an easy logo, right? This guy is relatively straightforward, and the inside is a lot easier to tell than the outside. So when I press F to autofill it, Blender does a really good job of figuring out how to fill. For your logos, it may not be this easy, okay? You may run into issues. One thing that we can do, ooh, didn't mean to do that. I got a camera mode. We don't want camera mode. We want to go back to top view, orthographic. There we go. One thing that we can do if we run into problems with filling is we can fill little regions at a time. So I'm going to press A to unselect everything. And let's say I just wanted to fill these four guys right here. I could do that by selecting all four of them, pressing Enter. So I used C for my circle select. Enter to finish my selection, F to fill. And now I filled in just a small chunk of the Blender logo. For some more complex shapes, you're going to have to fill it piece by piece like this because it won't work if you try to fill the whole thing automatically. However, the Blender logo, since it's nice and simple, we can just use A to select everything and F to fill it. In an upcoming video, we're going to learn how to add color and lighting to this logo so that it looks awesome when we render it. But right now, though, we're going to end up with a gray image, just a gray outline. What if I want to make this thing actually 3D? So if I turn my camera now, this logo is very flat. What tool can we use to pull this logo upward? Well, if we examine our tool list, we know that we don't want to move it. We want to actually add more stuff to it. We can add more stuff by extruding. Now notice everything I've done so far has been in edit mode. All of our tracing, all of our filling, is happening inside the object. So it's all happening during editing. It's not happening at the object level, okay? So we wanna make sure we're still in edit mode. I'm going to extrude, oh, come on, extrude, E to extrude to thicken this guy up a little bit. And there, now I've got a three-dimensional start of a Blender logo. All it really needs are the inside parts and some color, and I will be golden. That's how we're going to start our logos. In class, you guys are going to pick a logo that you like and try and trace it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Make sure the logo is simple. The more complicated your logo, the harder it's going to be to finish in class. Some ones that work really well are things like Twitter or Apple or the Batman logo. All of those things work really well, so try to keep it simple. Uh, logos without words are really good, too. We just want pictures, not words. All right, so we've got our 3D the start of our 3D logo. In a future video, we'll learn how to color it. The last thing I'm going to do, just to get it to look nice, I'm going to leave edit mode and go back to object mode. Okay, so now I've selected the entire object, and I'm going to go ahead and smooth this guy. Now again, this smoothing looks pretty bad. Doesn't look like a logo at all. It looks kind of like cake batter that has been sitting on the counter or a really bad pancake or something. So, to get this thing a little bit more realistic or a little bit more logo-like, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna use a tip that I learned in a previous video. Let's go to the data tab, right? The upside down triangle. And I'm gonna auto smooth this guy. Select auto smooth, and I'm gonna drop this angle down to 60. When I drop it down to 60, now the top looks nice and smooth, the sides look nice and smooth, but I get these sharp angles around the corners, which is what I want. I might actually lower that even a little bit more. I might go to 45. We get a nice smooth edge, but we get a nice sharp corner. And that's really what we want to see with the Blender logo. Remember, the more extrusions you do, I got really sloppy right here. The more extrusions you do, the better these round edges are going to be. So be patient with your logos. All right, that's all, it is to, all there is to tracing. Hopefully you guys will enjoy tracing your own logos and good luck. Thanks for watching.